Welcome to another episode of Dream Daddy All in Drag. Hello, I am Dorian Teach. I am today's, I almost said sponsor. I don't have sponsors, it's just me over here. Who would sponsor this garbage? Uh, not me. Oh, you know, and I run the shit. Uh, the show, not shit. But I also have my, oh, it's backwards. I have my daddy fan here. We're ready to be a dad. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe for more uh, episodes and like just to watch this. And wow, this intro is a mess. We're just gonna go anyway. Anyways. Oh, I just kind of wiped off some of my amazing uh, beard. What a. Ugh. Uh, we walked down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. All coffee right. shops always have great, like, names. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. Hmm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee in a, on a couch when I can just drink coffee? Oh my god, let's try that again. Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? Said like a true champ. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't gonna come up and sit on a recliner next to me and I won't feel like, uh, like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal zone. My personal zone is like, if you're anywhere within 20 feet of me, I'm not happy. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin to go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? I just had that. Like, I just met up with somebody at a coffee shop a few weeks ago and I was like, I don't know where to put my cup. Well, I don't go to coffee shops that often. Or do you leave it there and fill your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere with just out of sight and now you're the jerk who left their mug. Ugh. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yeah! Yes, Amanda! We walk inside. Hey. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls, and patrons lounge around on well-worn in couches. Some cool, cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Cute! Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How is it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's a. Uh, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> My drag name is kind of dumb too. It's fine, hon. I get it. Yeah. Hey. It gets mentioned in this poem I like and thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because like the business is still running. Mm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them this same answer every time. And now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking. But man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. That's fair, dude. Hey. That's fair. Nice tats. Hmm. So what will it be? Huh. I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately overwhelmed. Same. All the time. Like, I can't look at menus and not feel like my entire life is falling out my butt. I'll have a... Do I get to pick? Godspeed you, black coffee. Ice, Tegan, and Sarah. Chai and what I love word... Oh yeah, I love chai, so we'll go with that. Because I actually hate real coffee. Spicy. I don't get it. I really don't. Oh, it's a pun. Dye Antwood is a South American rap group. They're pretty well known for their uh, evocative, evocative imagery and hyper stylized music videos. Their music is as, as catchy as it is disturbing. Sweet. Hey. I'm doing the thing again. Yeah, you're fine though. Hey. It's fine. But come right up. Hmm. And for you. I'll have a Macchiano D Marco, please. I think I said that right. Coming right up. Do you want that in a small, medium, or biggie smalls? Okay, that one I got. That one I understand. Uh, medium. Ah. What is. Wait, is biggie smalls big or small? Uh. I should change that, shouldn't I? I mean, no, keep it. It's, it's a thing. As it's making our drinks, Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Oh, uh, info dumping. It's a near divergent thing. It's great. I do it all the damn time. Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you're listening to anyway. Ouch! Hey! Hey! Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's, it's alright. Good lumbar sport, unlike what I got right now. Huh. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. I mean, my couch is literally an older Victorian love seat. That's not exactly that comfy, so I feel ya. 
Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, I don't know. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I don't wanna. I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. You know. Sounds like my life entirely. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down on our table and immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Every single time. Maybe this character really is more me than I thought. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda. This is my dad, Dorian. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda keeps my leg from under the table. Hey. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. That good for you? Yeah, sounds great. You know what? Let me get you guys' opinion on something. Oh, God. No. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe and I need to help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we could uh, get the full flavor flavor profile of, you know, I don't know. Really appreciate the flavor sensations of Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that <laughs> that Nana bread a taste if you want us to do free creative labor. I think that would be a compensation. <laughs> come, come. <laughs> ah! Reading. I taught her well. We have trained for this day. And my eye is like watering. I'm going to have like eyeliner track down my toe all the way to my chiseled jaw, right? Is it chiseled? Did I do it right? We got, we, we're, we're here. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. That's kind of what the assumption was since he brought the bread out, but whatever. Right, yeah, that. Matt serves us each a piece, Amanda and I happily chow down. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh -huh. Thanks, the secret ingredient is bananas. <laughs> Why do I think that's funny? Mm. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad fan puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's? Grateful banana bread. Okay, kind of like that one, right? Said banana bread. I, I like this grateful banana bread. <laughs> oh, that was not good. Like the jam rock band fronted by Jerry Garcia. Oh. Uh, actually has a nice ring to it. He doesn't believe that. No, he doesn't like it at all. Hey. Really, yeah, great. Full banana bread straw. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. He didn't like it. Oh no. Hey. I want to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just didn't sound good coming out of my mouth. Maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. Whew, a lot of words. Hey. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Uh -huh. See, it sounds good when you say it. No, it does not sound good when I say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Your eyes meet just for a moment. Oh, hello, this guy is just staring at me. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Oh. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to go? I need a nap. So that's all I have left is I need a nap. We just had coffee. I had tried tea, thank my cat is being naughty again over the shelves. Have you ever known me to play the ride of the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. Now all aboard the train to Sleepy Time Junction. My foot is asleep again. One of these days I'll have a chair, but not today. We are walking home. I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. We're about to get mugged. Dorian, bro. Oh. Maybe not mugged. Whoa, mugged by a guy with a baby. That's the first. I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Hmm. It's been too long, dude. But yeah, wow, you look great. Bro. Uh, yeah, I cleaned up my act. Oh, cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Same. <laughs> Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> oh, were you now? Amanda, dude, you're probably not, don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Hmm. Oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. The River gurgles happily. Ugh, okay. 
Are you babysitting? No, he stole it. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Obviously buried in that pussy. No, I'm joking. Hmm. I was working out in California and just re relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding! Amanda and I just moved to the side of town. How is Smashley doing? Ooh. Oh. I mean Ashley. Ashley is her name. Yeah. Oh. She actually still goes by Smashley? I love that for her! And oh, uh, we got divorced last year. Ooh. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Mm. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all co. whatever. Twins! You have three kids. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Ain't life something, bro, right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three. Hmm. Keg Stan Craig? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, it was my old college nickname. Obviously, like, it, this birth certificate doesn't say Keg Stan Craig. Does it? He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Yeah, no shit, huh? Mm -hmm. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. That just feels like... A gravity nightmare. Huh. Right. He was very good at it, hence the name. Yeah, duh. Oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep my heart rate. I'll keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. I bet that baby loves, be like, riding around in that, because, you know, runners would just be like, well, whatever. Babies are bouncy, I guess. You jog daily? I, I jog yearly. I do not even do that. That is a lie. On January 1st, when I promised myself I'm going to jog daily for the rest of the year, but gonna give up about 30 minutes, I just walk home. Oh. Yeah, well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometimes. Uh, the answer would be no. <laughs> I don't know. Bro. Come on, it'll be fun. What is fun about it? We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up, we could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Bro brunch, come on. <laughs> Two guys sit five feet apart at the bro bun brunch because they're not gay. All right, sure, yeah, sounds great. Yep, no, we will not be doing that. Great, let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you, you guys. Craig leaves a little, gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in and goes off, jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Mm -hmm. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Oh, that's just college, baby. Amanda, he opened a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was something that normal people do. I was unholy, and then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. No, it's not. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. I mean, yeah, he's wrong, okay? He jogged! He was jogging! Eh? He's like a totally different person. Is he, though? Anyway, we better go home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Mena had flopped down on the couch. Mena has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Eh? Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Hmm. Ah, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl, and it's gonna be weird not having you around. I don't know if I could say that sincerely. <laughs> it's, I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. <laughs> well, no shit, I think she's a photography major. I mean, obviously I'm a photography, yeah, I'm a photography major! You promise? Uh. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? I can manage. Oh, come on, I'll be fine. I'll got a, I'll get a dog or something. Because that's the same as a kid. Ha! A dog! Ha! Forget an art school, I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Beat up size dog, handkerchief around the neck, I get to name it. That's what it'll cost me to give up my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. S same. Except not really. Well, a dog is not a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> In this economy, hell yeah. Amanda huh. laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, huh. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Thanks, doll. Yeah. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Hmm. But I'm scared. 
No shit, huh? It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Hmm. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. They hold my breath while Amanda's eyes start back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the mission committee has reviewed your application, blah blah blah. And we. Uh, her face drops. Damn it. I got to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College Art and Design. That freaking sucks. Mm. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. It's okay, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I should have ha shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfo portfolio. Their admission officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I love experimental stuff, so screw them. I pull Amanda in, front of in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your profile portfolio. Some other school is just going to want to snatch you up right for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Oh god, she's just saying that. We hmm. know that. I'm fine, really. No, she's not. Her face is the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Yeah, you're kind of, Yeah, we're right. We're right. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Oh, shit. Ugh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? No, I'm, I'm a cool dad. Like, I'm like one of those cool dads. You can drink as long as I can supervise, you know? I'm a cool dad. <laughs> not referencing... Oh, like, misrepresent... Like, miss... Oh, my God. I'm not misreferencing mean girls at all. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I'm conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place all to yourself. Huh. Yeah, what are your plans? Oh, fuck. Uh, quick, think of plans. I am secretly the major of this town. Got to attend the union meeting. I'm going clubbing. Let's go clubbing. I'm going to pick a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know the ones all the kids these days are doing. I don't know any of those. Like, what? Mm. All right, but I'm not going to come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Going to bed. Go out and watch... The game? <laughs> yeah, the game. Nice. Huh? Which game? Oh, fuck. You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Uh. The game on TV or somewhere other than here. Uh. Okay, cool. Well, you do that. I'm going to do drugs and commit some light arson with the animas. Sick! Don't get caught. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. <laughs> no, that's the right crowd. Amanda Shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. He. I'm a street rat, Pops. <laughs> okay. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <sighs> Only legal drugs. <laughs> yeah, Dad. Just making sure. <laughs> I give her a pat on the head. <laughs> have fun with your sports. Yeah, sports. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah, she's being sarcastic. <sighs> No, making fun of sports is played out. Oh, okay. Huh. All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clean here out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, parent stuff. All right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remember. I'll be there. <laughs> Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. My foot is already asleep. Oh. I'm not entirely sure what the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Hit the run button, sorry, y'all. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really, at this point. In the distance, could it be... Jim and Kim's? A big burned out neon sign hangs over the tiny bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, let's do it. Pretty new. Pretty standard bar in here. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if Jim's... If he's Jim or Kim, I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. I actually really don't like beer. I'm not the beer kind of person. Sure thing, boss. 
The uh, bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or are you Kim? I'm Neil. Sick. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs in the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but are currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. Okay, sure, why not? The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into the confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people at the bar are wearing the distinct colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that I, like me, <laughs> that, like me, the passion for their team is still all in good fun. Hey. Oh, hello. Village woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Who drinks wine at a bar? Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Huh. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Ew, I don't like being called fresh meat. Ew. Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Dorian, by the way. Hello, I'm Dorian. I'm awkward. Hmm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game for with ease. Oh. oh, I love that team. And also, I love the game. that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Okay. <laughs> Very upfront, uh, but you're you're be mistaken. Um, person behind this makeup does not know how to handle balls. In fact, they're actually repulsed by them. But we'll try. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, hmm. Buy a gala drink? Um, yeah, sure. Like, let's just buy her a drink. Why not? I almost reluctantly signal, reluctantly signal the bartender and order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Okay. Suppose I gotta keep you company now. I mean, you don't have to. You can literally just take the drink and run. Hey. So what do you want to know? What's your deal? What do you think of the game? What's the latest gossip around here? Yeah, what's your deal? Mm. Me? I'm a ghost story, and I haunt the hollow hills of Jill and Kim. Jill! <laughs> Jim and Kim's waiting for my beloved to return from sea. What the fuck does that mean? Really? No. Okay. Uh. Homegirl just likes a drink. Oh, okay. You came to a bar in a knit sweater and a pencil skirt. That's weird. So what else can you tell me about this part of town? Uh. It's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic life, little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. Are you the secrets? <laughs> She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Oh, gosh. Uh, I thought this was Dream Daddy. I thought I was dating daddies. But she's getting awfully comfy with me. I mean, I guess she could be a daddy if she wanted to be. I, I'm not going to tell her how to live her life. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? I don't know, man. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe some other time? Give it a rest. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close to turn in terms of points, a little too close than a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, pulling them in the lead, I hear an affirmation, affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Join the game. I am now. I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for the different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. Okay. He looks like he could beat me up, so I'm just gonna go with it. I have to agree with that. I mean, I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. Dude, what are we doing? What are we doing, dude? That guy can beat us up. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. Conversation ends there. We both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is closed, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Our cheer, our quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a respectful glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is born between us based on mutual love for the game. Hey, but does this sound like men where you interact with each other? I, I don't know. I, I interact whatever way I please. <laughs> he motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. Because I also don't regularly go to bars and I don't drink whiskey, but where we are. The name's Robert. Couldn't... Hello, Robert. 
Uh, thanks, I'm Dorian. <laughs> you must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about Chuckles? Uh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Well, thank you. Oh, my face is itchy, but I, I don't want to destroy my lovely mustache. I painstakingly drew every little line on it. And... I don't know. With love and care, I guess. Is there any... any is there actually a Jim or, or Kim that runs this place? I... No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Oh. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in the world. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. There's a joke there, but I'm not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. You can do that on your own, you sick perverts. You like shots? Ah, uh, I like shots. I love shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like them. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. That wasn't good. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Robert not Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Oh, I was just joking with you, dude. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Hey. Wait, I think this is what making friends is like. Is it? Because we just pissed him off. Okay, Dorian, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right now, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket, his rugged good looks. Compliment his hand tattoo. Oh, I see. It's like down here. I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Curse, some would say. Oh. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. <laughs> Way cooler than me, at least. Yeah, he is cooler than me. Look at his jacket. Robert, see me as the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? The game. My daughter kicked me out of the house, running, running for my problems, trying to make friends. Um. I knew in town figured it might be good to put myself out there. You seem per pretty cool. The key to being cool is acting like you don't care about anything, but actually care very deeply about everything to the point where it's debilitating. Fair, dude! Also, the I'm 13 and this is deep. Really? Hey. Robert downs the rest of his drink. Of course not. He gets up. No, oh. fuck, come back. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Is that a joke? Are you joking with me? Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Uh, he didn't like me. I made a joke and he didn't like it. Yeah, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then we're, I really must be. Oh, he ran right back. Comes back from the bar. Uh, bathroom grabs his leather jacket. Oh, he left it. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking the same direction. Oh, okay. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. You don't look like somebody who lives in a cul-de-sac, but okay. Uh, does everybody live there? Yeah. It's a cul-de-sac. There's a lot of people. Me too. We just finished unpacking today. I... Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. Mm. I don't kiss and tell, Dorian. Okay. Huh. So are we doing this or what? What? Oh. You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization what rushes over me. I blush. Oh, wait, does he mean... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Lay it on smooth, smile and nod. Uh, no, thank you. I better call it a night. Catch you around? I'm so sorry. I honestly, like, didn't think we'd have that option to, like, do a, you know, do a dude. But, um... That's a little much. I've already pissed you off once. I have a feeling that if I do that, he's going to reject me. Uh, because I've already said the wrong thing. So I'm so sorry. And if this is the wrong decision, then oh my god. I better call it a night. Catch you around? Mm. Sure. I don't know if that was the right choice or not. But like, I had home, head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. Ooh. I hope that was right. Like, I, it was just your- Ooh. Ooh, I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early birds still want to work out. This is Craig, by the way. Oh, fuck, I don't want to work out anything. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore without realizing it? I drift back to sleep. Oh my god, that's aggressive. I don't like it. Whoa, must have winked back out. Check my phone again. 
Hey buds, don't wanna get your swole on. Already ready to tear it up at the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Oh god, we're not gonna running. We'll have fun. Let's go to the gym. I feel like it's gonna keep texting me if I don't. Hey man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. Okay. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. No shit, Sherlock. I throw off the blanket. Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Aw, thank you, Amanda. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the, the morning. Birds chirp, the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me, waves enthusiastically. I mean, I honestly like to work out in the mornings, but I, like, it's just get it done and over with the day. Hey, bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you. Interaction. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. No, coffee in the gym is not great. At least according to my sister, because, uh, no. Oh. You ready to kick some butt? No. Gotta stay poised, dude. With your help, I am. But yeah, let's get asked for his help. I get the feeling this is gonna be less of me kicking butt and more of the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Oh. oh, cool. Yeah. We got some hearts there. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Oh, okay, yeah, bro. Hey. We head into the gym and immediately, I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. It seems like Craig is friends with all of them. Honestly, yeah. Oh. Hey, he high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Yeah, that's fair. That's, yeah. Oh. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be, walking. Yeah, that's what I usually do on treadmills because I actually physically cannot run, so. So, I know we're on treadmills. Nice. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals. I like those too, huh? honestly. Oh. Yeah, very good. <laughs> what is this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. Bro. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. Congrats. I'm already swole, guys. Like, look at all this. <laughs> I have a nice bruise from my roll later. It's great. I watch as a dude in a muscle as he flexes a, a muscle I don't know exists on a machine I think was once used to pro process grain into flour. I love that. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? Oh. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Oh, God. Why are you asking me? Trying to crush people's skulls with its thighs? I would love to do that. Who volunteers? Using a medieval torture device, praying to some sort of pain god. I'm going to go with the first one because it's my favorite. He's, he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he can crush people's skulls with them. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. Yeah, same. And to intimidate people. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh yeah! That was the right answer. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. No, do not do the same. Uh, uh, how long have you been doing this buff thing? Mm -hmm. A couple years. Yeah. And what do you do when you're not daddy? Daddying or working or buffing? <laughs> what the frick? Oh. Oh, I coach my twin softball team. Oh, that's kind of cute. That still counts as both daddying and buffing. Mm -hmm. I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to live my life as close to Jimmy Buffett's song as possible. I check out my hot pod. Uh, I kind of want to... Uh, let's do it. I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge. So I keep all the intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, wilderness, survival. Um, aliens, mostly those things. I, I mean, that's actually close to the truth. I, I like, love learning things. Mm. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Damn it. Yeah. Mm. Oh! He liked that. That was his favorite. Okay. Uh, we're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. Yeah, I literally medically cannot do that. <laughs> I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken his sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what jogging does hmm. to me. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Why are you bringing that up? Ugh, no. I don't like this story. 
<laughs> oh my god, he's really bumping up the speed again. I guess I'd better do it too. No! Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. You're gonna fly off the back. And we were at the party, and you know, you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I, I, I tried to steal the fish from the tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Bro. And then you drop the fish, and it's flopped around, and you panic, so you run up to me post keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off the ground, and we're yelling at me that we have to leave. Hey. Why would we do that? So we're running out of the frat party with the fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth rest. I say, why would you do that? And we get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the, uh, the prognosis is grim. Yeah, the next day he's uh, alive and well. Hey. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge, you. Yeah, they never did. Uh, they never will. I shoot off the end of the treasure mill and crash into the wall. Yeah, that's what I thought. Jesus, that hurt. Yeah, hey. no, fuck. Dude, bro, are you okay? No. Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I meant to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Yep. Millennial. Everything hurts, and I'm, I love it. Oh. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Yeah, exactly, dude, bro. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Hmm. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I just hit a wall. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. Oh, I stare at it with the most... They're what must be apparent distaste. Uh -huh. It's a protein shake, bro. Why is it green? Is it kale? I hate kale. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here goes. It tastes sm take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Hey. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. What did you put in it? Bro. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your uh, speed. No pun intended. Dude, I'm not running anywhere with you. Good one. Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig uses to order delivery from that pizza place across the street from our door, but now he can run circles around me, literally. Man, I've really gotta work on this dad bod. I do not have a dad bod. <laughs> I guarantee it. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. I am. I'm almost 30. <sighs> Life sucks. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep again. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. Oh, shit. I fin fin fanatically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Let's get it. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. Wait, I just realized, did I, like, sleep from, like, 6, 7, maybe 8 in the morning till nearly 4? What the hell? I checked my watch, and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot you, spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? He turns around and looks at me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Me in high school. Yes, I... <laughs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega? I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Ugh, fuck you. Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Sigh, so fine. Up those stairs to the left. Can't miss them. I head up the stairs and way up around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk sent me on a wild goose chase. No shit, why'd you listen to him? Get back to where the low rent <laughs> jar way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of a mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh, fine, Mr. Vega. It's four o'clock! He has nowhere to go! Like, he has not, it's not third period, unless they have night classes at this high school. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Dorian. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in. I take a seat in one of his comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Why would I do that? Why would we do that? All right, where were we? Oh, now we can tell. Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and the DJ Selin Selinger's Catcher in the Rye? I've never actually read that book. Um, Probably never will, to be honest. 
Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crow of his elbow to make a fart noise. Oh, I love high schoolers. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, hold it up. Hellfield is an unreliable leader in the sense that... Bell from the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in the, your textbook. Nobody listens. Of course they don't. Oh. I never did as a high schooler. Or not, I guess. Mr. Baker turns to me in size. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know. Budget cuts. Yeah. Right. Ah. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Please call me Hugo. No, oh, shit. Uh... I don't normally do this in prompt to parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Oh, God. What's going on? Uh... Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares recently, though. She's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. Uh, it hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Uh-oh. Eh. I just want to ask, is everything okay at home? Yeah, we just moved. I mean, we just moved. She's fine. It's been intense. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Uh, I will just say that. I don't need to talk too much about her, do I? Like, I don't want to give too much information about Amanda that without her consent. Well, we just moved recently, but it's also... It was only to the other side of town. Amanda was more excited about this than I was. Oh. My freaking camera died. We'll just finish this section and then uh, the episode will be done. <sighs> I know how impromptu school, I mean, how important our school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yeah. They ever catch that rye? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. Yes. Oh, I actually just automatically got points with him, even though I didn't actually have to do that myself. I leave the classroom and make my way out, this, out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positively in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day, but I'm sure she would appreciate it right home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. We just saved, so we'll come back to this portion in the next episode. Uh, yep, double checking my saves, yep. All right, so make sure you like, subscribe, and yeah, let me know down below what daddy you want me to uh, go for first. I don't think we've met everybody yet, but like we can already start talking about it down below. So what daddy do you want to see me date? All right, everyone stay safe, stay as healthy as you can, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!